Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with another brand new Mattel Jurassic World review. We've got ourselves another Hammond Collection figure, and I've actually had this one now here for quite a few days, but I just haven't gotten around to filming a review for it or anything. I'm just kind of getting back into the groove of filming new reviews because I was actually really quite sick for a little while there. I'm finally starting to feel... You know, a bit better, not fully back to normal quite yet, but definitely getting there, which is great news for me. So I was able to get the Triceratops review for Rebore up, which was also sitting here for a few days yesterday. And now we're going to get the Hammond Collection Concavenator up as well. So it looks pretty cool. Definitely something that I was excited about because I love the Hammond Collection and I think they are doing a phenomenal job on it overall. But uh, I have a feeling this isn't going to be my favorite of the Hammond collection just because I see the Ceratosaurus keeping that spot for quite a while. But it does still look like a pretty fun concavenator. You can see the box art is pretty much your standard as far as the Hammond collection and what we usually get. You can also see again we have that nice little window area for a shot there of the figure itself inside. Over here on the side you can see a really nice image of the concavenator here looking to its left along with the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom logo. And then, of course, because this would be a Fallen Kingdom figure, technically, because it was seen very briefly in the Lockwood Manor in a display. But you can also, again, see the name of the dinosaur. Also, some information here on the dinosaur. And also, actually telling us about the fact that it was, you know, on display in the Lockwood Estate. And then, again, a nice shot of the figure. And then the nice Hammond Collection logo over here. So... Let's pop this out of the box and check it out. So here we go. We've got our concavenator now out of the packaging. Definitely stands really nicely, even with the feet not even placed all that correctly. You can see they're kind of like, oh, now actually that I fixed the feet, now it falls back. So let's go ahead and rearrange these legs a little bit and try to get a suitable standing position for our concavenator. He looks a little you know, hunched over, but whatever, he's crouched a bit. We'll just have to get some better standing positions for it a bit later. But it does look pretty darn nice. Again, it looks really good as far as the sculpt. The sculpt is actually quite phenomenal. Lots of really nice detail that I can see throughout the entire figure. The paint job as well is really, really quite nice, especially for being a Mattel figure. It's nice to see, you know, a good bit of coloration on the figure here, the Hammond Collection Concavenator, which isn't something that's uncommon for the Hano you know, Hammond Collection line. We usually get some pretty decent paint apps, not great paint apps, but better for sure than what we get on the main roster of Mattel Jurassic World figures, but uh, definitely excited to get a closer look at this one, so let's jump to it right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt, you can definitely see again, it does sport some pretty nice looking skin texture. Pretty nice. I wouldn't say it's quite as vibrant as we see on a lot of more recent Mattel releases. And actually just looking here at the head, I would say the skin detail of the head isn't as nice as what we see down here in the body. I'm not really too sure why. You can see it does have some pretty nice skin detail, but it doesn't have like extremely vibrant skin texture like we often see for the Mattel line. Not trying to take away from the figure, but you know, that area of it could have looked a little better like it looks pretty good up here on the top of the head that's for sure definitely has some nice looking scale detail and uh, fine detailing up here just the side of the head looks like it could have included a little more and has kind of like a slightly muted appearance to it you can see we've got a really nice kind of like a blue green for the majority of the body and you also have this brownish coloration that kind of runs through the eye and up into the palette that brown is actually almost has like a slight metallic shine to it which uh is an interesting choice of color, but it looks pretty good on the figure. The eye is a little sloppy as far as the paintwork goes, and that's not something that I've really encountered often when it comes to the Hammond collection. So it's a little shocking to me to see that, you know, a little bit sloppy like that. It's not perfectly placed, and that, again, is definitely a little different from previous releases of the Hammond collection. You can see here on the lower jaw, we do start to transition to this lighter tone for the underside of the dinosaur. Of course, we've got an articulated jaw, and it can open very wide. Both the upper and lower jaws articulate together. You've got a really nice pinkish tone there for the inside of the mouth. Very nice texturing on the tongue, nice gloss coat as well. And you can have some nice looking detail here for the upper side. Not anything amazing or super impressive, but it looks pretty good. You've got some nicely sculpted out teeth. 
they're kind of all sculpted together for the most part like they're not individually sculpted but they look okay pretty much again as they usually do for the Hammond collection the articulated jaw works pretty nicely as you start to lead back here into the neck you pick up some osteoderms kind of running down the course of the neck lots of skin creasing as you move down you also get a red orange type tone of color more orange I would say than anything moving down the course of the neck just kind of splotching and designing there as you move down you also have the lighter tone of color here running along the underside I like that they've allowed some of that you know darker tone of color to kind of creep through the lighter tone looks really nice you can also see some of the lighter tone kind of spotting and stuff as you move along as you lead down here into the body you see some really large sort of osteoderms and stuff picking up right here in the shoulder area and you can also see the orange kind of striping out but diminishing as you lead there into the stomach region moving down here into the arm definitely we have some nice musculature also some scoots running down the course of the arm and one thing that is very nice about this figure which you might be able to take notice to already is the fact that I've kind of like altered the positioning here of the wrist because we have some nice scoots running down the wrist but we also have wrist articulation and that's definitely cool because now we don't have to deal with the pronated wrists or anything like that we can actually correct the wrists which is really really cool you've got some nicely sculpted out fingers scoots running down the fingers as well and then very nicely painted nails which is a huge huge plus especially just generally seeing a Mattel figure with paint on the nails of the hands that's like mind-blowing at times and again the actual skin texture here of the stomach region actually the entire torso is really well done like it's very nicely detailed and also very vibrant I also like that we have of course some ridges running down along the back here you can see them picking up right here but you can also see that we have some scoots running here along the spinal column as we lead here into the classic concavenator hump and look at how really nice looking the detailing there is of the hump we have some very reptilian type scaling there very kind of lizard like or snake like scaling and you also have some very large kind of clusters of bumpy scales kind of like osteoderm like scales also a super nice looking paint application there because I love how smooth the transition is as we lead out toward that orangish type of coloration there at the top it gives the you know, concavenator hump area, the uh, very flashy look that it probably should have, but in a really nice natural way and not in any type of an overly flashy way. So they did a very, very good job on that. As you move down here into the leg, you can, of course, pick out the muscle definition, a few more kind of lingering osteoderms right there. And again, some really nice looking skin texture. You can also see that we darken to kind of like a brownish tone of color here for the back of the thigh, which isn't something you usually see more often than not. You kind of see a lighter tone as we lead back. And I do like that because I like anything that differentiates a dinosaur figure from another and makes it more unique and that's something that you don't see very often so I do really quite like that aspect you can kind of make out the knee here moving down the front of the leg very big bulging calf muscle as well and some scoots kind of running down the shin down into the foot and of course you have some scoots running down the toes like you would expect to have very nicely painted nails here on the toes which is really nice to see unfortunately Mattel's hatred for the dew claw continues though because we do not have paint on the dew claw you can also see some more of that lighter tone here running along the underside again the skin texture is there but it seems a little muted for what I'm used to when it comes to Mattel even on the underside here but yet again I do like that we have some of the you know darker tones of color kind of creeping through the lighter tones and I do like that it kind of spots up here into the stomach region again but as you lead back here you can see that this brown starts to really overtake the tail in fact that lighter tone completely disappears as we lead out into the tail and we start to get this really cool striping effect from the orange leading down from the top you see the second half of that little hump area for the concavenator again looks just as gorgeous as far as that sculpting and detailing and the paintwork goes compared to what we had just seen on the first part that is really really nice very vibrant detailing there and the skin texture of the tail also looks extremely extremely well done as you move out and again this really neat striping effect I really like that I think it looks beautiful and the way that that lighter orange tone plays off of that darker brown tone is awesome before we transition to the entire tip of the tail again is that orangish tone of color very nice very flashy color scheme but 
using a lot of more naturalistic tones and not giving it too many, you know, incredibly intricate designs. They definitely did a great job of coming up with a flashy color scheme that looks extremely, extremely natural on the figure. The eye paint looks like it might be placed a little bit better over here. Still not picture perfect, but definitely a little bit better than what we had seen on the initial side. But again, everything should look the same as far as both the sculpt and paint over here as it did on the initial side. And I'm um, definitely seeing that here as I'm moving through. It looks really good, really precise, aside from, you know, a little bit of a paint mishap in the one eye and the lack of dew claw paint. I think the paint of this one is excellent. And of course, the sculpt as well is extremely, extremely nicely done, except for, again, some slightly muted looking texturing to the face, but still really quite nice overall and definitely another fun addition to the Hammond collection. Now, as far as the articulation goes of the entire body, of course, we already have taken a look at the fact that we have articulation in the jaw like i said we have the upper jaw and the lower jaw which gives you a really really wide open mouth you also have a spot of articulation right here in the neck it can swivel and it can move very nicely very freely all over the place which helps to create some beautiful movement in the neck that is super nice very smooth articulation you've also got another spot down here at the bottom of the neck again can totally swivel around if you choose to do that but again it also moves on kind of like a ball joint where it's extremely extremely smooth and also again just gives you a ton of posability like look at the turn in the neck just like we saw pictured on the box that is a very very impressive turn for the neck of an articulated dinosaur figure so kudos to mattel for really giving this figure again like that perfect amount of articulation as you move down you also have of course the shoulder area here you can also move it out away from the body then you have the elbow and then the wrist and all of it works really really beautifully like this might be the smoothest articulation that I've seen on a Mattel figure. And then moving a little further back, we and now we get to the point where it's kind of stiff because I haven't moved it yet. But uh, we've got the articulation of the hip, and that is stiff. So the first part was super smooth. Now it's a little bit stiff, but I would imagine to see as I'm moving it, it's definitely wearing in, becoming a little bit more flexible. You've also got the knee. Now the knee is extremely smooth, and of course you can swivel the knee if you really want to break the leg of your poor concavenator. And then as you move down, now this one is definitely stiff. There we go. We got it going a little bit. I was a little concerned. I didn't want to force it. There, we can see it moving forward and back right there. And it can also swivel. So you have that articulation there. And then you've got that last little bit of articulation down here. Just to kind of maneuver that foot around and turn it. It can also swivel to whatever position you would like it to. And then you have a spot of articulation here in the tail and you can see it can go down and go up get some definitely uh get some good movability there some good posability out of that area and then of course the wire tail like we've come to know and love from the hammond collection so certainly does have a lot of articulation and actually let's try to get it kind of standing up a little bit taller so it's not quite so crouched this time around there we go and i've also straightened the tail back out again so we can get a good measurement for a length, you are looking at about 13 inches or 33 centimeters. And then for a height, obviously the highest point would be that hump in the back there. You're looking at just shy of about five and a half inches or around 13 and a half centimeters, I would say. Somewhere in that vicinity. So actually it's a little bit over five and a quarter inches, I think would be a closer measurement to give it for a size comparison. There is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack, Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Hammond Collection Concavenator. And you can definitely see that it's pretty much exactly in the size range you would expect. This is a $20 release for the Hammond collection. So of course it's gonna be right there in the $20 size range. And uh, that would mean it's a very similar size to the Baryonyx or the Ceratosaurus, you know, figures that we have had before in that size range. And for another comparison, here is the Hammond collection Ceratosaurus next to the Concavenator. And you can definitely see they are a very similar size. I think the Ceratosaurus might be a little bit bulkier, maybe slightly longer than the concavenator but they are you know right there in the same size range for sure not too far off 
in the overall grand scheme of things as far as a size goes. And even though I'm absolutely not intending on bringing in every Hammond Collection release to do a comparison, here is the Hammond Collection T-Rex that everybody loves, so I felt like that one would definitely be a good one to bring in for a comparison because it's probably the most popular Hammond Collection figure to come along so far, and again, one that I felt like would be a good one to give a comparison to the Concavenator. And then for one more comparison, one final comparison, we have one of the Hammond Collection Velociraptors next to our Concavenator, just to kind of, you know, throw the icing on the cake here as far as different size ranges for the Hammond Collection and how the Concavenator kind of sizes up to those. So this brand new Mattel Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Hammond Collection Concavenator is definitely another fun release and one that I am actually quite happy to add to my collection and uh, definitely another really beautifully articulated figure from them. And honestly, I would say the articulation is definitely its best on the Concavenator. Compared to all of the other figures that Mattel has released in the Hammond Collection line so far, I feel like none of them can compete when it comes to articulation with the Concavenator so far because the articulation of the neck, first of all, is the best articulation that we've had in the neck of any of the figures, in my opinion. It just has complete freedom to move around everywhere and anywhere you could possibly want it. At least so far, when I've been messing around with it, it really feels like it has the ability to move pretty much anywhere I want it to, which is a gigantic plus for this figure. Not to mention the articulation in the wrist is fantastic, something we did not have on the Ceratosaurus, which I really would have liked to have had on the Ceratosaurus, but Mattel has definitely improved this this one over the Ceratosaurus and given us that perfect ability to correct the wrists on the Concavenator, which is a gigantic plus as well. And all of the articulation for the most part works really nicely and really smoothly. A little bit of stiffness in the hips and stuff and a few areas in the legs, but outside of that, extremely smooth and very high quality articulation throughout. On top of that, again, the sculpt is really nice. I would say it's definitely the best sculpt that we've had when it comes to a Concavenator so far from Mattel, as we have had quite a few in the past the detailing is slightly muted i think in the face and it, but that's like a very slight amount of muted detail because the majority of the figure has a really really nice very high quality sculpt as they usually do when it comes to mattel just a little bit more detail in the face wouldn't have hurt the figure but it also doesn't take it away any points i would say from the figure because it still looks fantastic a little bit of sloppiness on the paint of mine though in the eye just slightly but it's again like the most slightest amount of sloppiness so the only tiny complaints that i could possibly have about the figure are really really slight complaints because the paintwork otherwise looks great i love the paint scheme they've given it i like the paint application as well it all looks really smooth really nice transitions back and forth really nice naturalistic application of the paint overall the only really big downside to the figure as far as the paint goes is the fact that we don't get paint on the dew claws yet again because i don't know if mattel is just really forgetful or if they just really don't care about the dew claws or if they do genuinely have a grudge against them but they just for some reason refuse to give us paint on the dew claws fingers crossed that they've actually you know gone ahead and improved things like the neck articulation wrist articulation maybe they'll improve the paint application in the future with actually applying paint to the dew claws as well but honestly this is another phenomenal release and definitely one of the best i think that we've had from mattel for the hammond collection overall definitely heading in a really good direction and this has me very very excited for the future releases from the hammond collection so if you are interested in this i will include a link in the description to where you can purchase this on big bad toy store it was very briefly in stock on amazon which is where most of the people that have it currently seem to have gotten it but it very quickly disappeared and i don't think it's been back in stock since so i'll include a link in the description to big bad toy store where i believe it is still available to pre-order where you can get your pre-order in and acquire yourself this very nice concavenator so make sure you check the link in the description go grab this concavenator and like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching